All right. So I, I had told you earlier that I thought about doing this live, but things changed mm -hmm. last minute. So we're not live. Welcome to the show, Alex. Uh, Alex, you have a show called Chaotically Intolerant, which, you know, awesome name. But I'll tell you what, how'd you come up with that one? Because it, it twists, tongue twists me every time I try to say it. Yeah, we had um, we actually had a, a different podcast um or it was just a different name really um and then some things happened and some people weren't involved anymore um and i brought on some new people and we weren't really talking sports it was called the land and sea sports podcast but we okay. weren't really ever talking sports so i was like all right let's just make a let's do a whole rebrand let's change the name change the logo yep. like change everything and Honestly, when I was thinking of the new name, I hated Chaotically Intolerant. I was like, <laughs> I don't think this is a great name, but there was some, I wanted something that was close to that. It was on the tip of my tongue, but I just, I was like Chaotically Intolerant. I guess that sounds okay. That sounds fine. No, man, and it's it's a cool, so everything has a, yeah, everything's got a backstory and that's a cool one to have, you know? So, so you've been doing this for a while then. How many years have you been doing this? You know, I'm new to the podcasting game, but how long you been doing it? I've only been in it since, oh boy, let me think. So we started the very first one, which I don't even think those are available anymore. Um, it was after the 2021, no, after the 2020 Super Bowl. Okay. 2021, I'm sorry. It was Bucks Chiefs. It was after the Bucks Chiefs Super Bowl. Um, so oh, so yeah, you, you haven't been doing it that long. <laughs> no, not too no, long. <laughs> All right, cool. So tell me, I mean, I know a little bit about your stuff because I kind of took a look, but, you know, for anybody listening now, like, tell me and the audience, like, what what's your stuff? What do you do when you're on and where do they find you? That sort of stuff. So you have a nice little um, intro here. Yeah, so I actually do two shows. I do Chaotically Intolerant and then I have a football show that I do. It's a completely separate thing from it called Gridiron Chaos, um, which I do that during the football season just because I'm, I'm a big football fan and um, I just like talking football and, um, yeah, yeah. Well, we do gridiron chaos on Wednesday mornings and chaotically intolerant releases Monday mornings at 5. AM. So I found that was it, probably the best time. It's a good way to okay. start the week. Um, and we do a bunch of different <laughs> things on chaotically intolerant. We just more like comedy. We cover current events, make comments on current events, not like political stuff. We really try and stay away. From yeah, exactly. That. I did one. Um, yeah, I did. I did a guest spot last week or a couple weeks ago, and he he really got into politics with me. And um, I'm a very down the middle person, anyways. So I was I don't like to use yeah. politics because it's very polarizing. It you know, is. It is. We, we make we make plenty of jokes. Listen, I I make jokes about like the Bi the Biden's America thing because that's really funny, or Trump's America, like just just because it's like it pure is. comedy. But yeah, you have to see the humor in it. You do. Yeah, I think I think it's like a lot of super fandom, and I make fun of the super fandom. Like they, no. there, there's a video. There's plenty of videos of people who are Trump fans. Like there's one where it's like the guy's getting like raided by the police, and he's crying, praying to Trump. I was like, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I haven't seen funny. that. I mean, there's just so much of it out there. That's like I used to be. I'll be honest. I used to be real big into politics. I wouldn't say real big, but, you know, I had a I had a stance on things and, you know, I listened to this news channel that I watched. And then, you know, as you start, like, looking other places and reading other things and hearing other stories, you realize, like, it's, you know, there there's definitely angles that the news organizations have, you know. Yeah. So, like, they make you they make you go one way or the other almost. And now looking back on it, like, it's. A lot of people still don't know it, you know. I don't. I don't know if everybody figures it out. Like I figured it out, you know. A lot of them don't because they're so entrapped in their little news in their Fox or CNN. Um, there. I mean, if you, I, I've said it a million times, and I'll say it again. You go look at something that Joe Biden said on CNN. They're praising him, and you know they twist right. the words to praise him. And then if you look at it on Fox, they twist the words to destroy them yeah so it's like yeah, so they, like why, you said polarizing that's a great yeah, why, why don't it. you just report on it just say okay this is what he said 
And right. this is what it means. Like not be like, oh, you know, um, something like Joe Biden said he he's in support of abortions. So he wants to kill all babies. And it's like, no, that's <laughs> that's not what he said it's at all. Way, <laughs> way out of context. Yeah. Yeah. They take everything out of context. Both sides do. And that's it, even if I said that, like if I say both sides do, each side is going to take offense to it. And be like, well, really, the yeah. other side does. And I'm like, no, both you're doing that right hey i like your stance man because i didn't know that for you coming into this but like that's kind of my stance right now i just at this moment in time i don't have one i mean hey each person yeah i I go based i go based on the issues i don't go based on the color that's right (laughs) the color of the party i'm i don't care about red or blue no that's a that's a cool little way of looking at it yeah that school i'll tell you what i have kids in school man all right, back from technical difficulties. I wish I had my kid here, Ox the IT guy, to help me out. But hey, <laughs> sometimes you just got to make it work. Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, Alex, how old are you? 20. Dude, you're young. You got a. You're smart already, I can tell, but you got a lot of stuff to learn. I got four I've, kids. I've heard. And, and there's never a day that's not. Uh, something we'll leave it at that something <laughs> yeah it's, so I, I get yeah i get my couple hours a night to do my stuff here and that's fun but other than that it's just pure chaos just kind of like your kind of like your show and my show i guess <laughs> all right so hey so about your show so um i didn't get to watch a lot of it but one of the things i was intrigued by was uh do you have like a ping pong tournament we do um we do so tell a- me about that yeah, so it's called the Chaotic Lean Tunnel Classic. The last year was the first year we did it. And it was, okay. yeah, I kind of, it was a mix of like The Office and um, like Formula <laughs> One or um, what's it called? Drive to Survive. I don't know if you've heard I, of Yeah, because I caught like a pre, like I think I watched the championship and I saw like you had the back and forth and I, I thought it was really entertaining. I didn't get a chance to watch the whole thing, but I like where you were going with it, you know, if you can keep it going. Yeah, we're definitely doing it next year. It's going to be bigger. I want to do it yeah. be- a little better every year. Um, yep. I didn't like how I, I, wa- I want to do – because I didn't have a lot of time to edit it. So when we first planned to do it, I was going to give myself like a couple months to edit the whole thing. And yeah. then we had some things happen where we just weren't – like it was impossible to be able to do it. And I had like a bunch of people scheduled to come. And then we had to cut it from eight down to six. And yeah. I had to work with that. And I also, I had a specific day that I wanted to release it because it was the one year anniversary of the show. And yeah. we ended up deciding on doing it, man, three days before the release. <laughs> so an hour, you know, an hour and 15 minute, like, because we, we've had it taken down so many times because we used actual songs, not like right the, the you know, fakes or uh, not fake songs, just no royalty music. royalty royalty yeah yeah so we the only ones that are up are the episodes where i split it up because there just aren't as many um knocks into each video it's split up so there's like only a couple in each video so they don't really care um but it was like a full-on movie it was like an hour and 15 minutes and usually they say it takes like an hour for every 30 seconds of video to edit yeah or maybe it was like 30 minutes for every 30 seconds. It's something like that. So I ended up editing probably for 24 to like 27 hours wow. over like a, a 48 hour period or like a 36 hour period. Right. And then the night it was, was supposed to release, it, it, it got knocked down. <laughs> like as it was releasing, it got knocked down. I, uh, I just, I truly don't get... So like, um, I decided like what I'm going to, I have so many topics to go from there. Sorry. Um, you're good. Just we'll, we'll go, we'll go and see where it's at. Yeah. So we're, what were we talking about right there? Bring me back. This is what I do. I lose my train of thought. Um, so we were talking about the ping pong tournament and it got knocked down a bunch of times because of, uh, so with the the music, music. so like, what are you allowed to, like, I was thinking about like this graduate school thing, like. You know, I always find these cool things I want to research and I write them down. Well, I'm just going to come on here and I'm going to go through like, you know, articles, whatever, see what's what's interesting, what's not. But Mm -hmm. like, 
I was thinking like, can I listen to music while I'm doing that? But like, that wouldn't be allowed, right? Well, you cut out a little bit. What was the question? So like, you wouldn't be allowed to listen to music while you did that, right? Because it's not your music. It depends. So if there's a certain amount of strikes, copyright strikes on the video, then they'll knock yeah. it down. But I think okay. a lot of times, because we have every once in a while, we'll have like a popular song in our video and it just doesn't let right. us monetize, which we don't even monetize on the YouTube yeah. anyways. So right. I think it's really dumb that they would knock it down for however many strikes. Like they would just take the video down. Like I, I, so I guess don't let me monetize. Yeah, so that, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if I were to put this out and there's songs in it, and they give me mm -hmm. strikes, is that like strikes against everything I do, or strikes against that video? I don't think it's against. I think it's only against the video because some people say it's against everything you do, but I haven't had anything else taken down. Okay. So I think it's just against the specific video. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But yeah, that's that's one of those things I was thinking about. But the other thing I had from that subject was. See, I give myself a little thing here to cross this out. See, I'm about to go live, but I just didn't have it ready yet. So I'm glad we didn't. We can fix some stupid errors. But <laughs> give me that last like rabbit hole before we went down. What were you telling me? And then I said I have two things. Oh, um, just the ping pong tournament. and. Um... Oh, yeah, the ping pong. Yep. So mm -hmm. that reminds me a lot of when like I was younger. And I, my advice to you would be don't stop it. So like. I did this tournament called, you know, the game washers, like the circular washers and you throw them in the coffee can type thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. So like that was before it was like bigger, like all the yard games are bigger, like ladder golf and cornhole and all that stuff. But before it was bigger, we used to make our own and we started having this washers tournament. Yeah. First year we had like 16 teams of two. Second year we had like 25 then we got to 30, then we got to 40, then we got to like 64 teams almost. And then wow. after that, it kind of went, went downhill as people got older. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like looking back on it now, like that's one of the things I missed most was having that like yearly get together where you used to do something fun, you know? Yeah. A lot of my show is over Zoom anyways. We don't, oh yeah, we just don't have like the resources right now to do in person. Right. Like, right. But that was really cool to kind of get the three hosts together we ended up recording a show yep. after everything was finished together yeah. in, in person which we don't do that often um but yeah i want i want it to be bigger i'm expecting more resources to be pumped into it this year yeah. um i want to yep. get better microphones i want to get better cameras i want to get more i want to get more confessionals because we had like the confessionals and i was a little disappointed with some of the confessionals there's some players I don't know if I'm going to ask back just because of their content and <laughs> I wasn't a either. I wasn't able to use it or it right. just wasn't good enough. Yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, I banned, I actually, my dad is in that. I banned him because <laughs> not because he's my dad, but because he was so damn good. Like he, he won the tournament handily oh, very he? easily. Yeah. That was, was your dad. That won I, that's the one I watched, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean that was me and him playing. It was father son matchup. Like I, I'm, I consider myself a good ping pong player. I am the best out of everybody there. And yeah. then there's my dad, who's like he just whooped your ass, yeah, way up here. He's like so yeah. far up here. Like I'm <laughs> here. Let's say like I'm here. Like probably, you know, the the other ones are like down here, but then my dad is like he jumps me. He goes like 10 miles into the sky. I've never beaten I'll him. I'll tell you before. what. That's, you know, I'm like, I'm 36. So like, you know, your dad's probably close to my age, closer to my age than yours. But anyway, like as I get older, like you're 20, like there's probably a lot of sports you'll beat me in. Almost all of them. But like ping pong, uh, maybe pickleball, yeah. golf. Like those are the type of sports we can still beat your ass in. You know what I mean? I actually <laughs> recently, well, I, I play semi-professional golf. So oh, well, I take I take golf back then. <laughs> golf, golf, yeah, that one I was like, eh, golf. I'm I would say I'm pretty good. There's a there, I mean, there's a lot of good golfers. There's to, a lot of to the average golfers. handicapper. Yeah, and but average I'm, handicapper. Yeah, that, at the average, I think I did the math. I'm like top five percent in the world of of like based on my handicap at least, which I hate. To, you, I really don't like tooting my own horn, but that's 
you know. No, so what does uh, what does semi professional mean? What? Uh, I'm, where do you I just play? don't make enough money to to make a living yet. <laughs> yeah, but do, like, do you travel? Like, is there like a tour in Florida or nationwide, or what do you do? There, the, yeah, there's a bunch of uh, there's like a bunch of golf tours in Florida, some mini tours. I'm on one. I okay. was in a. Yeah. Actually, as soon as I pretty much as soon as I declared professional, because in golf, you you just kind of declare that you're a professional. Kind of like when I don't know if you've seen The Office, but like when Michael Scott declares bankruptcy, you just kind of right. say, "I I declare that I'm a professional." Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much. It's not very like you know like baseball. But they still, go up from yeah. college. Yeah, but um, I play on or as soon as I declared professional. I was in a car accident and broke my wrist. Okay. Oh, which sorry, that was about man. a year, 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 yeah, year and a half ago. It wasn't my fault. I was at a red light. Right. Just an idiot was being an idiot and hurt me, you know, hit me and yeah, my girlfriend was in the car. She was fine. Um, but I've but, just been yeah, rehabbing. In the middle of and, your, yeah, in the middle of your professional start. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. And I've been rehabbing and then I might have, you know, I'm, considering high you know i'm highly considering a surgery in january um just yeah. for some torn cartilage in there that's really hindering my ability so i haven't had the i guess the full ability to play tournaments i've played a few tournaments and i haven't okay. done very well but i haven't felt 100 percent since then yeah so. no well credit credit to you for coming back from it and good luck i guess yeah i just wasn't it's not one of those things you hear a lot about like the tours like that you know yeah um, but then you were, you also mentioned pickleball. I actually played pickleball for the first time this past weekend. And uh, <laughs> I, it was like my first time. And I always kind of yeah. thought it would be kind of easy. Like it looks, to me, it looks kind of easy, like an easy sport to pick up. And, you know, like the professionals and like the play, people who played it for a long time are going to beat me. But I'm right. an athletic guy. Like I feel like I could hold my own and I held my own pretty well in my it's, first game in, I mean, it's, in jeans <laughs> so i haven't played either i mean i just know everybody loves it but it's i mean is mini tennis what it is yeah pretty much that's okay that that's like all i treated it as and it's just the ball right. isn't coming as fast like that was that's why tennis is so hard is because they can hit it so right hard. but like yeah. a pickle yeah. ball you're just playing with a wiffle ball that's all it is you can't okay. hit a wiffle ball very hard all right, yeah. So it does sound a bit. It's a, a very bit easy because I up. like tennis. Yeah, I like tennis. I'm good at tennis, but tennis is very draining. Like if you're gonna run back and forth, doubles is better. Yeah. But you would you would probably right. be very good at pickleball then. Yeah, good. That's I'm gonna try it out because that, one of my uh, people at work had mentioned like in the intros like you know pickleball. I'm like, man, this and I, I they're starting a professional pickleball league. I saw, aren't they? Yeah, like Tom Brady's involved. Yeah, um, yeah. Let me think. There's a bunch of people, big names involved. In <laughs> cool. Um, so another thing I wanted to ask you about when I got you on the show is because you kind of dug yourself into this one, but you you mentioned a comment regarding Diet Coke. So you're a fan of Diet Coke? Diet Coke? Yeah. I said Diet Coke? I don't remember Diet I Coke. I thought... Oh my God, dude, a false diet coker. Yeah. Cause everybody's making fun of me. Cause my Thanksgiving plate, I chose diet Coke as my drink. Cause I'm like addicted to diet Coke. And I thought you picked oh, my plate. Oh, that was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. I like diet Coke. <laughs> a cold, a really okay. cold diet Coke is honestly, I thought... like, it's better than a lot of <laughs> other Cokes. Like McDonald's Coke is right up there, but then diet Coke <laughs> I think like a, it has to be ice cold. It's got to be 33 degrees it does. Fahrenheit. It does. It does. If it's anything it other than that, it's disgusting. And I can't stand it. Then again, I that's would, a lot of soda for me. But I would agree that that's a, that's a fair statement. Because if it's the perfect, uh, the perfect 33 degrees, as you mentioned, maybe that's it. But there's, there's like a good and then there's a bad. If it gets too warm, it's done. Yeah. You know? Any flatness um, to it. Any like it has to be super carbonated too. I agree. I agree with that. I'm getting into the sparkling waters now. Do you do that? I I try. It's like my my probably my biggest vice, I guess. Vice is soda. <laughs> like I just I'm a soda guy. Like I I will eat candy every once in a while. Bakery yeah. every you know like bakery stuff every once in a while. 
But like yep. soda is like my one thing that like everyone's like, you should That's stop true. drinking soda. And I'm like, why do you drink alcohol? And they're like, <laughs> OK, you're right. <laughs> I love that rebuttal. That's great. Oh, my gosh. So I guess like give me some. Uh... So I pegged you for Diet Coke, man, but you're not. So that's fair. You like sodas. So yeah, give me some top sodas. Um, I actually have the Baja Blast can right here. It's I see that one. Top, it's my personal favorite soda. It only comes out in the summer. And we kind of made it a whole thing on the show to like, we're trying to get Mountain Dew to release Baja Blast in the bottles year <laughs> round because it tastes different coming from Taco Bell. Because the Taco Bells I've been to, it tastes like they have distilled water running through yeah, the system. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can taste the distilled water in the Baja Blast. It ruins it. Uh, and then they're like, some people are like, oh, well, you just mix Powerade and Mountain Dew. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I want it in the bottle with a really cool design on it. Right. And yeah, I agree. It's a, And the can, actually, the can isn't bad. I'll give them the can. The can isn't that bad. Um, but the bottle is like, a nice cold Baja Blast on a summer day. I ha I have like, I stocked up, which it's like the most, I guess, Reddit thing of me to do. Like typical Reddit person thing of me to do. Like I stocked up on Baja Blast. Like, hey, I know hey, some friends. You know I know friends that bought like ton, like 15 to 20 boxes. Like I was like, wow, I bought a lot. And I bought two cases of the cans and then two six pack bottles. Well, I'll no. tell you, I'm not going to pat. It's a great opportunity because I'm going to do the same thing. The next time that Oreo releases the most stuffed Oreo, I'm going to buy everything I can find because they sell out like immediately. That's, do you remember do those? They do that year round or is that? I've only ever seen them the one time and I'm say I keep telling myself I want them. So if I ever see them again, I'm going to buy them in bulk. I'm going to, I'm going to look them up right now. See if they're, Dude, if there's they're a release, there. I'm going to. Yeah, the, it was called Oreo, the most stuffed ever, I think. The most stuff. Oh my the mostest. God. The most, most ist. Oh, mostest. Yep. So I was watching a, uh, while you're looking that up, I was watching a video. Um, Penn State's my school, so I was watching a Penn State. I think it was a basketball game. Mm -hmm. And I saw, like, the coach on the other team, like, how he reacted to his players. And, like... So you're athletic. You've done sports. Have you had a lot of different coaches? Yeah, I've I've played a lot of different. I you know I did baseball, okay. basketball, football. I've coached yeah. plenty of times. So you've been around. You've seen mm -hmm. it. So, yeah. like in my opinion, like I've coached even my kids' teams. I've been coached. Like in my opinion, like the coaches that come at their team like crazy, mad, yelling, screaming obscenities. Like I would not want to play for that coach. Do you think differently than that? I don't know. Uh, probably not. Like, no, I think I think there's different types of coaches though, and they should do based on what their team needs. Like there are guys who need right. to be yelled at to play better. Right. There are guys who right. need like a hand on the shoulder and to be comforted to play better. There's guys that need yeah. rah rah speeches that are like, see, I, you know, I let's agree. Go, with that. Let's go. You know. Yep, yeah, I agree with it that. Just, like the, it but, depends on the like team. a coach. But a coach that's every year is the same way, yelling and screaming. You know what I mean? Like that's more of a that's that's the person. That's not the player or yeah, the situation. That's, that's the coach. That's yeah. I I try when I do coach because I did. I I was actually sadly informed today I was relieved of my duties as a middle school defensive football coach for this. Season. Oh no! <laughs> so I was very disappointed. I was, but um, Sorry they said I can still come to the practice. It just. It had to do with the somebody else wanted to come in, and it's not a big deal. But um, it was a whole thing. <laughs> but uh, they said I can still come to the practice, which is fine. But um, when I was there, I mean, I was the, the defensive coordinator is supposed to be kind of the hard ass, anyways. I think like yeah. that's always been reputation, the roles, yeah. Which that's right. how I kind of tried to do it, but I also was like, I tried to like not be buddies, but I would try to be nice and like talk with the guys, yeah too and you know yeah. like not just be like frown on my face constantly you can never do anything right, right. and i'm never gonna try and be like a friend to you because yeah you know, yeah a, you're kind of friends like you're kind of friends to them in a way you're there i mean you're with like that's how i consider it because like i coached for example well i take it back 
T ball, I just did three four year olds, <laughs> and that is just not. It's not anything I want it's to do coaching. again if possible. It's way too hard. It's babysitting. It's rounding. It's ra- it's like hurting cats. It's all hurting cats is the exact phrase I've used it multiple times. Yes, but I coached also my kids. Like he was in seventh grade. His basketball team was like seventh, eighth, ninth grade. So like it was the perfect age because like. They weren't good enough to quite beat me yet, but they were good enough to like play with me, but I could still beat them. So like yeah. my practice turned into like five on five where I was playing and I could be like the dominant swing player that could do everything on the court. Yeah. It was like reliving days that never happened, you know? It's great. That's always fun. I recently played in a flag football game. I actually cut my <laughs> lip really bad. I've been like I like it just my top tooth hit it and sliced yeah. it. Yeah. And oh, I have yeah. a fat Ooh. lip right now, and it's, I mean, it just burns like hell whenever I eat. Um, yeah, I know. But I recently mean. played in the game, and, like, all the guys I played against were my age, but I, I'm only 5'10", but I was the tallest one there, which was, <laughs> I was shocked. And I went through, I had, like, eight or nine catches, 200-plus yards, two touchdowns. Like, I was do- I was all over the field. It was awesome, and I was like, I, I said played like minute, he's never I played like, before. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 yeah, it was awesome. And for a minute, I was like, should I go back? Should I try and play <laughs> football? And then I was like, no, I'm playing flag football against kids that like don't. <laughs> most of them don't normally play. Reality check, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like there, there was like a minute where I make like a few good catches. I made one. It was down. They threw it there- down the sideline, and I'm getting double covered. They tip the ball. And I literally just stuck one hand out and grabbed it. Uh, like I just yanked it out of the air. I was like, this is my ball. And like being able to be like looking across from everybody, almost everybody. Hey, there was one kid that was like up to my, he was like at my level and we were competing all in day. In the zone. In the zone is a thing. Yeah. You were in the zone. It's real. But being able to look at him and being like, yeah, I'm going to beat you on this route. Like I'm going <laughs> to toast you. I'm going to be an, I'm going to score a touchdown here is awesome. And it feels so good. The, my favorite part about the outburst was it was like it was like it was staged like he like this was his he thinks this is a way of doing it because like it's he goes moment. and he stand he stands by the benches and he just like silent looking at the ground and then he runs into the huddle and he starts screaming and yelling and blah 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 it's like dude it's so set up <laughs> it's yeah he's the main char- he thinks he's the main character basically yeah oh I enjoyed that one um. So other than that, uh, I had another topic I wrote down. Like, do you have a, uh, do you have a TikTok page? We do have TikTok. Yeah. It's okay. I, I it's hard to grow on there because there's so many it, people on there now. It is. It's like, you know, I don't, I don't know who sees what, and really I don't bother with it anymore. Cause you know, if people enjoy this, they enjoy it. If they don't, whatever, I'm not going to bring in this other whole crowd of people, you know, but, yeah. um, I noticed my wife was on it the other day and there was a, like, you know how you, maybe it's Instagram's the app, but like, you know how you put the filter up and it gives you like faces and stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was like, Hey, look at the camera and it'll make you a Santa Claus or something. And my wife just like, yeah, she's looking at it. She hands it over to me. Like, whatever. Don't think anything of it. And then like less than like three minutes later, I start hearing clips of like things I watch all the time on TikTok. And I'm like, I'm like, do you ever hear them? She's like, who? I'm like, the people that are on there right now. She's like, no. She turns it. I'm like, I'm like, do you ever hear that guy before? She's like, no, I never. I'm like, it just started playing all my stuff after it scanned my face on her phone. You know what I mean? Well, so I actually know what that is. That's what is- so the TikTok algorithm. Anybody that you follow or that fo- anybody that follows you. They're going to see a video that you liked most likely on their okay. for you page at some point. Cause it, the, that's how the algorithm works. If like, if they like this video, it's going to push it to like somebody that follows you. Okay. Because you all liked right. that. So that's that I know there is like TikTok is selling our information and all that shit. But I yeah. think that is just that, that is just how, how the algorithm works. Okay. That makes sense. So, I don't know. I, I think the scanning the face, I'm sure they do scan your face. I'm sure they keep everything, all of your face scans yeah. when you do that. But there is, that one is the one reasonable explanation where I can be like, okay, that's, you know, they're, that's it's not wild. the Chinese government trying to steal from us. 
No, it's every, everybody does face technology in some way. So, I mean, who knows what the hell's going on when you, that's, I mean, that's Hey, what, those... that's what got me about a lot of the conspiracy theory behind like, you know, the, the vaccine when they were like, you're going to, which again, I really don't talk politics, but I think it's just funny. People are like, well, you're, they're going to inject a microchip into you to track you. And I was like, <laughs> guys, <laughs> I mean, you carry a big <laughs> microchip in your pocket that's radiating that's your valid. balls right now it's valid they, they yeah that's a on, valid argument Facebook, to that statement i mean if you to truly be i mean to, for somebody to truly say that and like have a true reason i think they should have to be off the grid like if they have any form of internet they're tracking your information and like everybody <laughs> knows it and it's like at this point i don't care i'm like whatever dude track my information what are you gonna get i mean like you said, the cell phone, there's that. But God, what was my other counterpoint to that? Oh, well, we lost it. But anyway, yeah, if they want to track us, they can track us. I mean, I'm sure there's way more advanced ways than we even have any idea about, you know? I think the people that that are so worried about being tracked have something to hide. I think that's truly, they have something to hide. That's, or they're that's... going to do something uh, that they want to hide. I mean, you've got a valid counter argument to all of the... You know, I'm never going to pin myself to one side, but you have a valid counter argument to all of those facts. Because, like, I, if, if, <laughs> like, if somebody just doesn't, great. They're, they're if, great. Yeah. If somebody just doesn't want to get the vaccine, I really, I'm like, whatever. It's your body. You do whatever you yeah. want with it. Like, who cares? I, exactly. I'm of, I'm like of the I side don't... where, like, which is funny because I've, I've seen like a shift in how, because the conservative name, is they want an extremely small government. They don't want like a big federal government. They don't want people infringing on their any of their rights. And there are some rights, some things. I won't say rights. Some people don't agree that they're rights. There are some things that they're like, no, you sh- you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> and then they get upset when, you know, I, I've seen, I think it's more common for a conservative to get like upset over somebody's like sexual identity or somebody's like yeah. hair color, like if it's purple. And it's like, I genuinely look at it and I'm like, what does it affect you if this person has green hair? Like, yeah. gen- like, how is your life changed at that point? Are you just super insecure and you just, for some reason, that's how you take out your insecurity? I just, <laughs> I just think anything, if, if I'm not affecting, if, if something is not affecting my life directly, I don't care. I really like drugs and, and that's, alcohol. That's a valid, valid argument. Valid argument. Yeah. Again, I'm not like I'm not a drug a... guy. I'm not. You know, I don't drink. But if like somebody, if a consenting adult wants to participate in some sort of drug activity that is illegal here, mm-hmm. and I think is not, it's terrible for your body. There's no reason to do it, but they want to do it. Yeah, you should have the right. Like whatever. It's a choice. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Same, same thing with like no, legal prostitution. All that stuff. Like if two consenting adults are like, here, I want to give you money. We can go we can go have sex. That's like every porno ever. <laughs> Just on a camera. That I mean, that is a valid argument. And then you know that they talk about like the, the how they have all the standards and um you know they there's nothing they say is accurate. Those people can do anything they want. So what's the difference, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I do agree. I, I think that there should be help with like a regulation of some of those things, like with the fentanyl issue right now. Like I think New York state and like Oregon, they have safe use facilities or something like that, where they will test, they give you like a clean needle and they test some of the stuff for fentanyl, which is super important yeah. because I know somebody who died from a fentanyl overdose mm-hmm. and it was extremely sad. And it's like, this was completely avoidable. <laughs> it really was. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't I know think... much about fentanyl. Is it, is it, is it true that they can put it in anything? Is that accurate? They can, they can cut it with anything. So like they can put it okay. in cocaine and it makes it, I I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure I could be wrong, but they, yeah. it basically gives you more product. It, it's a filler. Yeah, right, right. And it's a fentanyl is 
it's a drug that slows your breathing down. It slows everything. It slows your body down. And it, it was, it's used in like medical practice. It, there are uses for it. I think it's for right. like some sort of, I think it has to do with like uh, anesthesia and stuff. Again, I, yeah. I don't, I'm not super yeah. educated on it. So I don't want to. But like an- anesthesia, they have somebody there at all times watching what's going on. And, and they do the it perfectly amounts. safely. They know the specific yeah. amount because like, I think like a gram of it can be lethal or two grams of it. Like well, a I very, mean, very, very stories. small amount. I was reading stories about like people finding like dollar bills with fentanyl on it and five dollar bills with fentanyl on. It. I'm like, what? oh my god. A why and B like can touching it really do that? I mean, you know how like you have to have the masks and the like if a cop were to find it, you know how he has to get all in gear and gloves and everything. Like if you touch it, is it really that dangerous? No, I think you have to ingest it. I think it's something that has to get into your blood. Okay. If you if you do just touch it, I mean that's again, I don't know. But you even if you have like a small cut on your finger, it possibly could. Right. Because I mean that didn't make sense to me. I, I just didn't I didn't understand how if you touch something like that, you'd be sick from it. You know. Um. Here I'm gonna look. But at anyway, it. it's still terrible. It right now. Too many people. Still believe. terrible. Stay away from it. Yeah, I mean it's there's no there's absolutely no reason for anybody to do it. I don't understand. I mean, I know like there are times where a drug is laced with it, which that's they're not choosing yeah. to do it. But there are people who just choose to do fentanyl for no reason. It's like, I there want is... to try this drug. And I'm oh, like, there's well, what are you all sorts of videos? Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, people I mean, put all it out these there on the Internet a lot of live leaks out there. So um, you're not married yet, but I, I wrote something down that's like a look forward to like one day if you're ever married uh like whoever your partner may be they're in the car with you so like i've noticed that my wife and i she's she's gonna start coming on the show with me here more often we have a lot of fun doing it but (laughs) yeah that's every time we're in a car together and we go into a parking lot there's always a fight about the parking spot in some way in some fashion one or the other somebody doesn't like the spot that the other person pulls into so that's something you have to look forward to (laughs) I, uh, with my girlfriend, we've been dating over two years now. Um, okay. Which in the scheme of things, I guess that isn't very long, but you know, that's still pretty, that's a pretty good relationship. Yeah. Um, but we do every once in a while we get into a fight. Like when we go to the gym together and I I specifically (laughs) remember I was like driving, looking for a spot and I was like, I'm going to go to that spot. And I drove past the spot that she thought that I was driving, yeah. I was going to go to. And I pulled into the yeah. spot. She was like, "Why? where are you going? Why are you going here? I was like, I want to go to this spot. <laughs> I'm going to she this was like, spot, yeah. <laughs> she was like, you passed one closer. And I was like, this Doesn't spot matter. is better, though. Just a better it's on spot. my way out. Anything, yeah. Yeah. So I, I've had Gosh. like a very small amount of that. But yeah, you're, looks there's like going to be looks more. like I'm looking more. To, uh, to more. There's like, it's never the right spot for both of us. Never once (laughs) do I remember the perfect parking spot. Oh my gosh. Um, So how big are you into like, uh, are you big into like any TV stuff or movie stuff or anything like that? Um, I'm big into DC. Um, That's like DC comics. I'm a big Superman fan and it's not looking too good for us right now compared to what Marvel has. No, we... we talked about that on one of the last episodes, but the one of the guys was telling me about the timelines and stuff. And I remember asking him, like, so what does DC do? And, you know, he's like, Batman, pretty much it. <laughs> They've made a lot I mean, of Batman what's, movies. What's the other stuff they do? Like, recent, I guess. What's the recent stuff? Well, they did... Um... Oh, my goodness. See, a lot of it's forgettable. Um yeah, see, <laughs> I, I got to look it up. I mean, I can I can mention like the Snyder Cut and Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman and Wonder Woman. I'm trying to think of so. Oh, okay, Wonder Woman. That was one of them. Wonder Woman. Wonder okay. Woman. Um, Man of Steel was in 2013. Um, they did Peacemaker. Oh, uh, okay, Peacemaker is cool though. The Suicide Squad. Um, let me look here. All right. Some of them are okay, but there's others that I 
I don't know. I've just kind of gotten out of that genre, I guess would be a good way to say it. I just don't, I lost interest because there's so many of them, I guess, you know, I've, we, we've, it's been a topic of discussion multiple times. My, my co-host Layton is like a avid hate. He's an avid hater of Marvel. He just despises everything they do. And like, he, he even thinks the things before Endgame was bad or were bad. I think most of them were pretty good. But after, yeah. I think it's just garbage and it's like money. They, they just know that they're going to get your money because you're just going to go where see I'm at with it. That's where I'm at with it. Like, so the original, like, Spider-Man movies and some of that early stuff, like, I enjoyed those. But, like, mm-hmm. exactly like you said, now there's so many of them and they're so... Like, when I look at commercials, I think it's the same damn movie every time. I'm like, I could care less to go see that, you know? I think it's just overdone. Yeah, I... I think again when once it got to Endgame because I think Endgame was a really bad movie like just movie wise the way they had right. like a time travel thing was really stupid <laughs> just like didn't make any sense and then Endgame but it was it had a lot of fan service I'll give it that like it was an awesome movie to watch because they brought all the heroes into the same movie on the same scene and they're charging to go fight Thanos and a lot of the movies <laughs> before that were really good Infinity War was really cool and yeah um because it had like captain america with a beard and he was kind of a badass like he wasn't like a boy scout and you know the first iron man the first captain america um i love the incredible hulk with edward norton i don't know why they switched to mark ruffalo i know norton is kind of a pain in the ass to work i like edward norton he's he's a cool actor yeah i've I've heard he's i've heard he's kind of kind of a prick off camera (laughs) But he's an awesome I get actor, that from him. Yeah. And I love his movies. He's got great movies. Yeah. Um he's in some wild ones, man. He's got some wild yeah. movies. Yeah. Um, but after Endgame, I mean, they just after what Endgame made, made like over a billion dollars, did fantastic. It's people are still probably streaming it all the time. They're like, all right, we're gonna take this really low quality CGI and just throw it into every movie, which yeah, I hate it's They're, they use a lot of CGI anyways. It's too much. They're it's like too scenes fake. Like, it's not necessary it's to use CG. Yeah, it's like they, I mean, I hate I hate to say non-believable, but after a while, like you you lose the. I I mean, it's probably it's too old for you now because it's probably twenty years old. But like the old Spider Mans were realistic. Oh, I now, love those. Movies. Every, yeah, yeah. Every movie they make now is just so unrealistic that it's like you know I get it if you like that style and. I hate to say it, but children too. I mean, children like those things. And if you're an adult, well, you the like target. that style. They are. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like not all comic book. It used to. It really did seem like they were targeting like comic book fans, and mm-hmm. like you know people who knew about it because they would throw in all these different things, you know, Easter eggs and stuff that you can point to, and that like only right. specific comic book fans would know. And then now it's just like they do it they overdo it where they throw it in and they make it obvious and it's yep. like no there should be I like agree. some little thing that like <laughs> you have to catch and it's just like a cool little nugget of information about something in the future yep yep so like, um i, I want to move on to another one here because a, a good thought just popped in my head so i don't know if you've heard any of the episodes where i may have talked about this but i talk about old man things and you don't qualify for this yet because you're too young but your dad would. So like, do you know of any things that like your dad does that are like so old manish? Cause I, I've got a great one for you after that. If you know one. Let me think. All right. So I, I'm not going to put you on the spot. So like my best example that I always talk about is my old man jeans. Like I have this one pair of jeans now that I wear to do like all of my outside yard work. And I don't even know how yeah. it happened. Don't even know how it happened, but I have this one pair of jeans that I wear every time. And I started talking to other people about it, and it's like a thing. Like, we all have this pair of grass jeans that we use to go outside and cut grass and do shrubs and whatever. Every adult, like, has this one pair of grass jeans. Maybe two, have, but one for the most part. I am I honestly, I consider myself more of an old soul, so I do a lot of old man. Like, I play golf. I love baseball. Like those are two very specific old man things. I'm much more yeah. of like a home. I'm I'm a homebody. I love. I just like being at home and relaxing. Um, yeah, it's kind of like. Yeah, I do. Too. But I do. I, do I have a specific pair of pants I do the lawn in. 
like when I do the lawn, I, I only wear a specific you're, pair you're of well pants. On that your is way. a very old man thing. It's not jeans though. They're like these. You're well like, on your way. Yeah, <laughs> I I think jeans are extremely uncomfortable doing. Like if I ever have to sweat okay. in jeans, I'm like, okay, no, it's, this is really you're, gross. You're gonna adapt. You're gonna adapt because <laughs> with those jeans, you get you get the buckle belt. You you know you get the belt, so you have the hooks. You also have the four pockets, and they're solid pockets, so nothing will fall out. You know how if you have the flimsy stuff, it'll possibly you know, dump out the other side, but with jeans, it's safe. <laughs> that's, a, that's an old man take. I'll say that. <laughs> oh God. All right. So here, here's another one for you. So I caught myself doing this probably a week ago now. And now like, it's the only thing I do if I get any free time, you know, cause kids usually have the TVs. If the kids don't have the TVs, my wife usually has something on TV. But when I get those moments where I can watch TV in the evening, Aerial America is the best show I've ever seen. What is it's Aerial on the America? Smith, it's on the Smithsonian Channel. Um, and if you don't know what it is, like all it is is they send a like a drone up in the sky and it flies over like different states. And as it goes over like all these things, it gives you like historic facts and like that. You know things. Yeah. <laughs> so like now That's I something catch myself. I wouldn't do. Every time it comes on, I'm like, yep, now there's aerial Argentina, there's aerial Greece, and you just get to like go to history class and just watch all these things and just want to go to all of them. I used to watch, I used to love American Pickers when I was younger. Oh, I agree. I used to like that show too, but then I feel like I they all got... I always loved that show. I, I haven't watched it in a long time. It's more because I had cable back then and now I don't have yeah. cable. I just have streaming yeah. services. Um, but that show like my I dad feel, i don't i i was just gonna say i don't know if it's accurate but like the beginnings of those shows i feel like were awesome and then i feel like they just kind of get like staged but were they always staged you know what i mean yeah i don't know like you know how yeah, now I mean, like they... now every time they go there now they're guaranteed to get some big item and it's a big deal you know what i mean it's almost yeah. like it's set up like, I yeah. like the ones where they used to go and, like, actually find cool things, you know? Yeah, I, I remember, actually, me and my dad used to watch, it's um, it's a fish, it's a show about where they build luxury fish tanks. See, that's, those are cool shows. They are. I can't remember, for the life of me, I can't remember the name. I, I remember a show like that, but I don't remember the name, but I know what you're talking about. Like, the inside, they made hallways out of fish tanks and, like restaurant huge fish tanks and stuff like that fireplaces i'm looking it up here i don't tanked it was called tanked okay that was I remember awesome a show that, like that show was awesome they were like these two new york guys they would go and do stuff for like different celebrities and like build these <laughs> like elaborate fish tanks and then there were the treehouse people who would like build a tree like a luxury treehouse and stuff that like all those like discovery and history shows i would i would watch like all the time because they were just very interesting it was very different from like regular TV. no i mean what i noticed most about the air so aerial america i love a you know if i ever get a chance to travel the country I, i'll be the old dorky ass who goes and looks at that stuff because it's really cool but yeah. now that i watch like the other ones like the other countries like I hate to say it, man, but like living here in the United States, like you don't know what's out there. And like some of those countries are like so cool looking. Like I, I really didn't even know that stuff was out there. You know what I mean? I hate yeah, to say think, it, but like we're kind of like shielded from it. I think that that is a really good point. There's a lot of people in the United States that like hate the United States. Like just like yeah. the stuff we have here. They're like, we have no culture. And it's like, no, like Americana is a big culture. Yeah. Uh, like around yeah. the world like americana just because like we live in it so much like we don't think about it but like going to like you know like think about your typical like 50s diner or yeah. tailgating yeah. before a football game or like high school football or all the americana stuff like other countries yeah. there's like restaurants dedicated to americana <laughs> which is hilarious to me it's so funny but then it's like well we have restaurants that are dedicated to 
all different types of right, right. Of, yeah, of I've never, I've never even looked just, at it. It's that just way. such a melting pot. Uh, America is such a melting pot that it's like we see like the other cultures, like we see little tastes of it in like different restaurants, like a Chinese restaurant or you know yeah. an Indian restaurant. Yeah. And we're like, oh, <laughs> Americans have no culture. But then it's like, no, like we got a really interesting culture. We have like a very diverse land. Like we have mountains, oceans, you know, like yeah, we beaches, do. mountains. We, we have we like desert. We I think we have like almost all the major ecosystems on our on this in Except the country. rainforest, probably. Yeah, there's a rain. I'm Except sure there's rainforest, rainforest, right? I'm them. Let me see. <laughs> Everglades, maybe. No, they're not high enough. Oh, they're anyway. they're a uh, marsh, I think, some sort of marsh. But I I digress. But yeah, Argentina. That's what Argentina was like. You know, they had the Patagonia Mountains, and then they have all the farmlands. They're one of the biggest exporters of wheat. Like all this mm -hmm. shit that I learned that I had never heard of. Argentina had a lot to do with Paris, France. It's the Paris, France of the South. I I learned no. all that in like twenty minutes. I heard the Netherlands, they don't have farmers there anymore. For I some heard, reason, well, because of some war, they like got taken away. I don't, I don't know what the reason yeah. was, but it was like something like that. I'm going to write that on my list. So, dude, what I'm going to – and this is stupid, I will admit it, but I'm going to try it. So, like, you know, as we're talking and I talk to people and I watch things, I write down these little topics I want to research. So, I'm going to write them all down and I'm going to come on here on – like a live thing and just like i'm gonna look up this netherlands farmers crisis because like you said i have no idea what the heck happened and what's going on but i heard they took land away from farmers yeah so like that, i'm just gonna research all these little things that i heard that i want to like get a little bit more about you know mm -hmm. and like if anybody comes across it and knows about that and want to come on or chat or whatever i was like that'd be cool it'd be a good way to like get some interaction maybe, you know? Yeah. Cause I do it anyway. What's the difference if I do it on here, if I do it in my office by myself, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's going to be something I'd see if it has any, any possibilities, I guess we'll leave it at that. So um, yeah. In closing, I want to give you a chance to talk about your, uh, your show gridiron. What's gridiron chaos, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I see your Colts gear. Uh, what happened this year? The offensive line failed. That's the that is the best. And people people are trying to put it on every different side. They're trying to go. No, it was the coaching. No, it was this. <laughs> no, it was that. It was like, no, we have a terrible offensive line, and Matt Ryan okay. is old and he can't move. He is. That's what I said at the beginning of the season. They were talking about him on maybe one of the shows I was on. I was like. I was like, Matt Ryan hasn't, I mean, hey, nothing is Matt Ryan. Maybe he's my best friend. I just don't know. But he couldn't win in Atlanta. What's going to change now in Indianapolis? You know, that was my opinion on it. Well, I think, I mean, you, we saw a lot of quarterbacks, older quarterbacks, go to new places and succeed um, Yeah. in the past few years. It's been kind of like the formula, really, um, at least the past two because it was – Bucks and Rams that won the last two Super Bowls. Right. Yeah. Last two. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, but I, I, I honestly believed in Matt Ryan. I thought he he did okay with a bad Falcons team last year. I thought he still had it in the tank. We knew the movement just, wasn't was an issue, but we everyone assumed that the Colts' offensive line was going to be top five again because that's what it was for the past few right. years. I've never seen a offensive line regress so much in a single off season. It's like, are all the, uh, do they have Space injuries Camp. or is it the same guys? It's pretty much the same guys. They lost Ryan Kelly, who was terrible in pass blocking anyways. I mean, they lost Chris Reed, who was like a backup for most of the time anyways. And yeah. they never, they never played him. He was worth it. They just drafted this kid, Bernard Raymond who's going to be a monster. You, he, you can already tell he's had some penalties. He's had penalty issues, but that's a young, that's, that's typical of young players. So yeah. I've never seen anything this bad without injury and without players leaving in free agency. It is just a utter failure of 
of I don't know what it is. I mean, it 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 seems it, they, it reminds me of Space Jam when did they, they take fire the players' yeah, towers? Space away. Jam. That's what it seems like. It really is. I just watched that the other day with my kids. Great movie. Um, well, the, did the they fire? One. Did they fire Frank Reich? Yeah, they did. I think it was long okay. overdue. All right. I, All right. Some people say he was dealt a bad hand, which I kind of agree. Um, five quarterbacks in five years is yeah. really diff- is really difficult for a head coach. But he was the one who wanted Carson Wentz in there, and I don't think they should have gotten rid of Carson Wentz in the first place. He had an okay. He, I don't. He wasn't for a quarterback. That bad. No, no, for a quarterback in his first year in a new situation after coming out of such a toxic situation in Philly. Like, and he was so he wasn't that old. I mean, you gave up on no. him way too early. It was my opinion. It was a I so I actually went to the Jaguars Colts game where they lost and lost their season. Um, yeah. when it was win and you're in, and I think it was just an emotional reaction from Jim Irsay. Chris Ballard did not like Carson Wentz, Jim Irsay did not like Carson Wentz. Frank Reich was the only one that said, Yeah, I want Carson Wentz. And well, they were like, look, look, he didn't make the playoffs. We lost. But it, and they're like, he came that. out, he looks shitty against Jacksonville. And Ursa even yeah. came out and said it in the media, which is shitty. It's shitty just to do that. That was wrong. Yeah. But it was like, no, the entire team came out flat footed against Jacksonville. The entire team really looked flat footed against the Raiders because those were oh, two winning loss. games. Yeah, that was a big loss. That was the last game of the year, wasn't it? The Jacksonville game was, yeah. Yeah, and like, they were like Jacksonville 13 point was a, favorites. I mean, I hate to say that, but like Jack, they, Jacksonville had nothing to play for. I think they probably already locked up whatever draft they, pick they needed. <laughs> they had just fired Urban Meyer. Yeah. <laughs> like three games before, they had just fired Urban Meyer. I mean, oh man. It's what what happened to what, their uh their really good middle linebacker Leonard? I feel like Yeah, was he around last year? He was around last year. He had a back issue, and it was kind of he, – he was having the issue to start the year. He did not play in the first game. Maybe he did. I think he, he might have played in the first game. Got hurt, wasn't there for a few weeks, came back for like six snaps, and then got hurt again, and then had back surgery I, to end the year. Oh, man. Like, because he was Which, one of the best ones. Like, he's a guy – like, will he come back to his old self, you know? I think he will. I think he's – I think he's one of those guys that kind of uses it because he was when he was taken in the second round, everybody said it was the worst pick in the NFL draft that year in 2018. What school did he go to? What school? South Carolina State. I want to oh, say. Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't know that. He was he was at an HBCU. I know that. So he he wasn't like a highly recruited recruiter. No, he wasn't. He wasn't like super highly recruited. Um, yeah, he played college football at South Carolina State. Um, but Chris Ballard saw something in him and was like, yeah, we want to take you in the second round. And everyone was like, that is like one of the worst picks in the draft. <laughs> he he has like tweets liked that like are trashing the Colts for taking him. And then he wins rookie yeah. of the year the very next year. And it's like, yeah, guys, fuck you. <laughs> like, <laughs> look at what I can do. Which was awesome oh, to see because he seems like a very good person too. I uh, Do you play a lot of fantasy football? Yeah, I'm I'm in a league with um a bunch of friends, and then I actually manage my other friend's team who he just doesn't know football, and his his friends like wanted him to play. So I uh I just I I fucked up last night. I was on my way to the playoffs. I had the sixth spot locked down. I thought, and then I had Kyler Murray like however many plays into the game go down, and then the other team that I never thought would beat one of the top teams in the league beat the top team in the league so i got knocked out of playoffs you know it's just like the worst worst day i'm in a battle right now i'm i'm actually half a game back of the final playoff spot and there i'm playing the second worst team in the league this week this is the final final week of the season and then he's playing like the third best team who's they score a lot of points okay hey that's the same that's similar to what i was in man you gotta you got to, and I have, I have Justin that Herbert. Right I have Justin Herbert who's playing in, he's playing like the 31st or the 32nd ranked defense in the league, the 32nd ranked pass yeah. defense in the league in the tight. Yep, so yep. 
I'm I'm confident, but I'm super nervous that everyone's just gonna lay an egg. And I'm because I've won my league two out of the last three years. I'm I'm oh, a man, dynasty a right track now. Or I'm trying to build a dynasty. If I win one more, it's a dynasty. Hey, but it's not there yet. I think three three qualifies. We have a guy in our league that's won five of seven. He's locked down dynasty team. You know. Yeah, and um, I I also went the the year I lost. I went to the championship and lost. So I've been three years hey, in a row. That's a good track record. The worst, yeah. I, I, I hate to say this to you, especially because it's your team, but I got the second pick in the draft and I thought I made a good pick with Taylor. And like you said, the offensive line, just terrible and he can't do anything. It was a good pick. I, I still stand by that it being a good pick at the time because it's like, of course, he had, he, he yeah. had like 1,800 yards last year. I mean, it just makes sense. I don't think anybody should kick themselves for taking him. Because it's not like, well, like you said, pick. I mean, was Ryan Kelly that good? I mean, if he's the only guy that left and they regressed that much, was he that good? They're they're worse in the pass blocking game than they are in the run game, run blocking game. But like, maybe I he think... was that important in the running game, though. You know, I, I don't know. I don't well, know. How the same, like you said, it, it's like Space Jam. <laughs> yeah. Frank Reich refuse. He just refuses to give Taylor the ball. He did. Yeah. And obviously, when you don't run him over 25 times a game, it doesn't help stretch the field because the defense, right. they, they, they know, that, yeah, they're going to key in on it. And they know you're going to pass a lot during the game. So they're going to sit back and wait for the pass. And they're like, all right, well, Taylor's going to run the ball under 20 times a game, 25 times a game. He can't kill us that much. That's so really he- the issue is that he's just – yeah, I, it frustrates me. Beyond that's why the offense is so dead, and then so Taylor do they just have doesn't have a, any pass def- or rush defense or rush. Do block. they have a? No, you're good, man. Do they have a quarterback, or or is like this year going to be a year they probably draft a quarterback? I who's there? Like, do they have a draft pick on their roster or anything like that? Well, um, well, they have a first round draft. They have a first round pick. No, yeah. Year. Did they pick one in the draft last year or anything? Though? Did they have like any young quarterback that they're thinking might be their guy? Sam Ellinger is like, he was kind of the okay. thought for a while. But okay. I'm, I'm kind of thinking like, well, I don't, they should take an offensive lineman in the first round with whatever pick we get. Maybe they, I think actually if they get a top five pick, you trade it back, get another second round pick and then take an offensive lineman Inside the top ten, but outside the top five, and then like take an immediate Hendon Hooker. starter. Yeah, take an he immediate tore, starter on the offensive line, and take yeah. Hendon Hooker. Take a project quarterback. That's is actually he... good. Okay, so here's my concern with him, only because I don't know anything about him, but he came out of nowhere and he hurt his knee, right? Yeah, so he did come out of nowhere. He tore his ACL, which nowadays the ACL is not like a death sentence as it was years ago. Players come back from that all the time. Kyler Murray's going to come back and probably be fine after they repair. Right. Hendon Hooker led the country's best offense in, in, in NCAA football, and he was like one of the main reasons why they were the country's best offense. They scored quick. He, he has a gun of an arm. He can move out of the pocket when he needs to. And hopefully, with this ACL injury, It'll actually help him stay in the pocket a little more and make him smarter on when he will run the ball, on when he will he, actually use his body. When we say he came out of nowhere, though, was he on the Tennessee roster the prior year? Did he start or like did he just was he a backup? Um, I think I think he was there. Or did he transfer? Did he transfer? No, I think I think he was there the year before. I'm gonna look here. Um, let's see. Let me look at their, his stats here. Because, um, like, that's the Virginia one guy. He was at Virginia okay. Tech from okay. 18 to 20, transferred to Tennessee, started at Tennessee um, Okay. in 21 I mean, and 22. I just wouldn't think a guy would just year. come out of nowhere. Yeah, he threw, yeah. Actually, he threw 31 touchdowns last year. Went, he threw 2000, or almost 3,000 yards last year. Only three interceptions. So Not you're bad, you're either. the you're the Colts GM. You're trading back and you're taking a quarterback second round. 
assuming we're inside the five, inside the top five. Okay. If we're not inside the top five, then I say you stay in the top ten and you take a there, – there's a guard at a Northwestern. I can't remember his name, but he's – everyone's saying he's the real deal. Huh? Skaronsky or something like that. Yeah, especially with a last name like that. That is an offensive lineman's last name through and through. <laughs> um, yep, yep. And, yeah, you, you take Hendon Hooker in the second round – and you develop him for a couple years because I think people forget your quarterback isn't always supposed to start in the yeah. first round or in the first year. <laughs> a lot of times they don't start in the first year. They, they right. at least in history, the Colts got blessed beyond belief to fall to, to basically have Peyton Manning land in their lap, Peyton Manning and, leaves, Andrew Luck. and then Andrew Luck lands in your lap. The yep. Colts have never yep. had to scout a quarterback. Like truly I would agree with that. The quarterback until now, because like you said, like the people that re- like think of Tom Brady, think of Aaron Rodgers, think of like even like a Big Ben Roethlisberger. Like everybody, like, I think they, well, Big Ben, I take it back, but they like replace an injured starter in their first year, maybe their second year, and then you know they kind of start off behind them. They don't get thrown into the fire right away. Yeah, well, Brady, everyone kind of forgets. Like he had that magical first year where they won the Super Bowl. His second year. They went like eight and eight and he wasn't very good. Like he had a slump and people were like, Oh, this guy really isn't that much, but Belichick stuck with it and look where it got him. It got him another Super Bowl the next year. And it got Brady all the way here to he's playing in, in his forties and you know, he's dating some other <laughs> supermodel now, apparently. Oh, I'm sure he sh- definitely, I'm sure he is. Um, yeah. But hey, before we go, I'm going to close on this because, you know, we're, we're a little over an hour, but I like this one here because we're talking football and I, I saw a hit that I was just like, ow. <laughs> and uh, it brought me to my question I asked another guest. And since you're like a young guy now, I asked them, if I were to put you in an NFL game kickoff, you're out there. You're on like the, let's say on the kickoff, you're on the return team. How mm-hmm. many plays do you last in an NFL game? And the reason I bring it up, did you see the hit on Mike White, the quarterback from the Jets? Yeah, he got hit twice really bad, but there was that one that he literally wrapped around. Yes. Could you the... imagine that? And so, like, how oh, many God. plays would you last before, like, you felt like that guy and you probably felt like you were dying? <laughs> I've actually asked this question. We we had um, Akeem Davis Gaither, who's a linebacker on the Bengals. Okay. Um, we okay. had him on the show and I asked him that question. I was like, listen, how long do you think the, if you plucked somebody off the street, how long do you think they would last? And he was yeah. like, he wouldn't get through a play in the NFL. I was like, <laughs> see, I, and I, I, I played my, that. my, I played my flag football game this past weekend. And right. it was the first time I played football in a long time. And like after the, the next day, everything Below the waist was as stiff as a board. I yeah, like just sore as hell. Sore as hell. Physically move. When even the game after the game, I sat down on the park bench for like thirty minutes. After everybody left, I was just sitting there. I was like, "And you're twenty, dude. Like, imagine Tom Brady playing football at forty-two. Yeah, I, I was in a lot of pain. Imagine. And now also <laughs> like, I I said I told I told my girlfriend I was like I want to do that again. I want to do that again. She was like, yeah. No. She's like, you're in so much pain. I was like, yeah, but you know, my body's going to get used to it eventually. It's going to get used to the jumps and, you know, if it happens once a week. And Hell no, it won't. No, you're, you're mistaken, <laughs> Alex. You're mistaken. It won't be as bad. I'll say that. It won't be as bad as it was. Um, I was also playing a little more physical than the other people. I was making some dives. I made one dive at the end of the game. It was oh, like, like you said, converted... you were in the zone, dude. You were in the yeah, zone. You're it feeling was the it. You giving it that point. little bit extra. <laughs> yeah, it was to convert a two point conversion. I was running along the I was running along the goal line and I was just ahead of the defender and I was like yelling for the quarterback, like throw it right here, throw it low, and I'm gonna make a dive and catch. And I All he right. throws it low and I just like bread basket it, bring it into my chest, and I drop to my <laughs> knees and I'm sliding across the end zone and my knee oh. gets caught in like mud and my oh, knee no. basically hits and then I start flipping. And like rolling over. That's that's like a perfect ESPN clip. You know, they would have had that sideline end zone camera right on yeah. you as you slid. And I just I just <laughs> laid on the ground when I when I finally stopped. I laid on the ground for like 
at least for like 30 seconds, probably. I was like, Phew. and it was the last play of the game. So I was like, oh my God, that hurt. <laughs> and then like the ref All like right. comes over to me and he was like, here, come on. I was like, Ugh, don't get me up. But I got up. Yeah. We actually, yep. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll end on, I'll, this is my last thing. We, I was playing defense and it was in the end zone. And my, the wide receiver I was covering was running across kind of the exact same route. And I was about to make a jump on the ball, make a pick and return it for two. And the wide receiver slams into the ref, like head oh. on, whole body, boom, right into the ref. And I'm literally right behind the wide receiver. And I was about to make my jump to make a play on it. And then I end up hitting the ref. Like I end up hitting the wide receiver oh, and man. hitting the ref. And then the ref falls. It was my hit that knocked the ref over. And it was like, bang, bang, like two really Defensive big pass interference. Defensive yeah. pass interference. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, hey, man, I appreciate it. That was fun tonight, Alex. I look forward to maybe doing something in the fun. future. Mm -hmm. um, and for anybody watching, hopefully you're here. You know, we're trying to go strong. We're going to be, Alex, by the time your comes around, well, I take it back. I've done like 27, 28 now. So we'll get them churning out. Yours is probably going to be released tomorrow because I have to edit the other ones. I only have a few cuts to make in this one. But uh, go ahead and promote your stuff real quick. Let everybody know where you're at one more time, and then we'll call it a night. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Um, Chaotic Clean Tolerant is available on all major podcast platforms, YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music, uh, Apple Podcasts. Um, the Chaotic Clean Tolerant Classic, if you want to check that out, it is available on – there's a playlist on there, but they're just episodes now on our YouTube channel. Um, okay. It's got like a little, you know, you, you'll see it. You'll see it. Um, yep. And then Gridiron Chaos, it releases Wednesday mornings uh, at 5 a.m. Um, just a weekly football talk show. It's only during the football season. And then I do right. a Tech Mobile live stream where I'm like a football <laughs> coach. And I do, yeah. it's one game a week. It's, you know, like a true football, like I'm an actual That's coach. That's pretty cool. So, That's yeah, pretty cool. I, I, tr I take it very seriously too. I take it super seriously. Are um, those that'll on, be on Gridiron where are those Chaos. At? Uh, okay. It's on Great on Chaos's uh, YouTube channel, or okay, I think it's going to be on YouTube. Yep. it might not. I, be. It uh, might be on the Chaotically Intolerant Twitch. I'm not sure. Um, so, but I'm doing a uh, I'm doing a pot like well, I don't know what you call it, but my kids want to do a Hot Wheels thing, so I'm going to do a Hot Wheels thing with the kids on the uh, cool. on the YouTube channel. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, but, man. Well, uh, hey, Alex, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on.